debate whether schools should offer in-person instruction. Here's a Harvard epidemiologist's opinion on what schools should do. I'd say in Texas at the moment, uh, schools should not be reopened. I'm trying to step away from the phrase reopening, by the way, and trying to introduce the phrase pandemic management, because I think it's a more responsible way of communicating what's actually going on. Um, it's a mistake to think that you can have everything. It's very clear that we need to think about age groups differently. Adolescents, college students come to that, they seem to transmit the virus a lot. Now, the contrast with that is the younger age group, because that age group is much less likely to show severe symptoms of disease. Now, I think it is reasonable to suggest that they probably are somewhat less likely to be infected. Once the virus is able to get into a school, if it does transmit, then that's an opportunity for it to potentially get into a number of other households. If you are going to do something on a date at some point in the future, you have to be prepared for the virus to, for the situation to change. This is something which we have seen again and again and again and again. Um, and I really profoundly wish that people would stop expecting the virus to cooperate. It's very, very difficult to um, think about opening high schools if there's a risk of introduction. But what you could do is you could ask your local community, you can ask yourself, um, what risk are we prepared to take? Welcome to another edition of Confidently Speaking with DOC. I am your host, David Doc Shirey. Your belief that you can achieve anything. Episode number 20 on tap tonight. I can't believe this is my 20th episode, but having so much fun. It's been great. And tonight we have our first panel. We have an all-star panel, and we're talking COVID in the classroom. I mean, schools are getting ready to start again, and this is a discussion that has to happen. But before we introduce tonight's guests, I want to remind everybody that this is a participatory program. Please comment, ask questions. We've got three guests tonight, so if you ask a question, let me know who the question is for, and I will pose those questions to our guests. Um, also, if you could share the video, that will help expand the show's reach and it will allow me to continue to attract great national guests. So without any further ado, let's meet tonight's all-star panel. Pam Parks grew up in the Hill District section of Pittsburgh and proudly graduated from Shenley High School before attending Point Park University. She got her master's at Carlo University and has two kids that also both went to Pittsburgh Public Schools and to college. Pam has worked for the Pittsburgh Public Schools for 21 years, 15 as a teacher, 7 as an administrator, and she is now the principal of an elementary school in the Pittsburgh Public School District. Lauren Hafner is a college freshman at the University of Maryland. She is an Alderice High School graduate who organized a parade for her graduating class so that the class accomplishments did not go unnoticed. Over a hundred cars were in the parade. She also established a program for elementary students called Keeping Up With Kindness. She worked with the mayor's office and Classrooms Without Borders. She's also been involved with the Friendship Circle and the Jewish Community Center. Cash Holtzman is nine years old and plays football and basketball. He enjoys ninja obstacle training, riding his skateboard. He loves music and attends Falk University on Pitt's campus. He played Hamlet in Shakespeare's play and enjoys playing the piano, especially songs by Queen and the Beatles. One of his favorite things to do is hang out with his new puppy, Charlie. All oh, welcome to the program. Hi. Welcome Hello. to the show, Cash, Lauren, and Pam. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, this is so exciting. You know, this is the this is our 20th episode, but it's the first time I've had more than two other people on, and that was kind of a debate, and uh, it was a lot of yelling going on. I promise you there will be no yelling going on tonight because you guys are some of my favorite people. When I thought about the panel I could assemble for this show, you three were at the top of the list, and I'm glad we got you all here because I thought about it, and I was like, you know, we need a couple different age groups, and then we need an administrator who's a superstar. And the fact that I kind of know each of you and your families really helps because I wanted really good people on the night show. And, and that's what we have. So let's start with you, Cash, all right? You know, Cash, you and I, my man, we go back. 
I mean, Cash, we go back to day one, man. That's you, day one. I gave you your first ever terrible towel, and I've watched you grow into such a cool little man. And, you know, I know, Cash, that you go to the Falk Laboratory School. What, what's the plan for going back to school for you, Cash? You can do distance or online, uh, and distance or in person. So are you going to be going to school a couple days a week and then staying home a few days a week? Um, it's either go back five days a week or uh, all online. Have you made a choice as to what you're going to do? We have not. What what would what would your preference be? What would you like to do? I really want to go to school to see my friends, but I also want to stay safe. What do you miss most about being in school five days a week, Cash? I miss my friends, my teachers, learning. When you're home, because I know you went through this in the spring. Did your mom and dad have to help you with the online learning? A little bit here and there. Now, do you think your mom or dad would make a good teacher? My mom's really hard. Yeah. Well, that, that's good, you know. That's good. You'll learn a lot that way. All right. Lauren, let's talk about you for a minute, Lauren, because I know this has not been easy for you. You just graduated from the best high school in America. All the dice, the dice. You're now an incoming freshman at the University of Maryland, your father's alma mater. What's the plan for you this fall, Lauren? I leave a week from tomorrow, which is actually so crazy to say out loud. So at Maryland, you could either do a set up and go system or you could go all in one day. So if I would have done set up and go, my parents would have moved me in. And then next Thursday, they wouldn't have been able to go in my dorm room with me. So instead, we're just going to go next Thursday so that they can actually come in right after they move me. But you can only have two people. So tell me about your level of excitement. Are you apprehensive about what's going to happen? I'm skeptical because, as you've seen at UNC, they're already being sent home. So I feel as though now that we're going later than the other schools, maybe – we're going to stay longer because we're going to learn from their mistakes. I mean, in my heart, I'm very excited, but I'm also very nervous because what if I set up my room and then they're like, oh, sorry, you know, we won't see you in a week. And that could just be so devastating. That would suck. And, you know, I, I, I remember, I know, even as a parent of a college kid, but, you know, the fall and going to college, your first day of school, I mean, it's just such an incredibly time. And, Boy, this is just a gigantic wrench thrown into all of that. Now, Miss Parks, I'm going to call you Pam because that's how I know you as Pam. But, you know, Pam, you and I go way back from, from Little League. This is Elijah and me celebrating those gigantic trophies when we won the Squirrel Hill Little League Championship in 2009. But, you know, right here. You know we go back way – yeah, that's right. We go back way further than that to when these kids were in – T-ball, right? Right, right. And, you know, Pam, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show was because I saw through all those years of Little League how much you care about all these kids. I mean, it just oozes out of you. Just You're just such good people. As a matter of fact, I want to show a clip to Cash, to Lauren, and to all our viewers. Now, this is a clip of Miss <laughs> Parks in the springtime when they sent all the kids home. And Miss Parks missed all her kids. So everybody, <laughs> let's enjoy Miss Parks. Hello to all my Lincoln scholars. It's Miss Parks, your favorite principal. Listen, I miss you all already. I just want you to know that we love you because we always will. The halls are so empty without you. I'm gonna show you the hallways. They're so empty. I miss having you all in here. I miss some of your voices screaming, Miss Parks! Let me show you the hallways. Um, I just want you to know that we have mail packets out to you. Look at that hallway. Nobody. Mail packets out to everybody so that you can have something to do. One of the kids already asked me, can I just write any answer? No, that is not the right thing to do. I want you to read the books that we sent home, read the passages, do some work, actually take some time to answer all of the questions and answer them to the best of your abilities. See this? Nothing. Nobody in the hallway but me. Craziness. Craziness. 
Um, we are still serving lunches from 11 to 1. Please come down and get some lunches. I've seen so many of you, and I'm so happy that I've seen you outside a little bit, getting a little bit of fresh air and walking over and getting those lunches. It's important to me that you all are all okay and safe. Please follow the rules that have been in place for you. Know that everybody here is missing you and caring about you. Even though they aren't here in the school, they have called and texted and asked me if I've seen kids. And I have to tell them, yes, I've seen you all and you're all okay. So please, 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 in this time, take some time to rest. Take some time to read. Do some math facts. Do some work. Be nice to each other. Come and get the lunch. And remember, we're going to always be here. I uh, can't wait to see you all again. I'm going to try to post a little video every day just to let you know how much I love you and miss you. Um, maybe I'll read a book and we'll post it onto our Facebook page. So tell your friends, log on to the Lincoln um, page because they're going to miss out on seeing me and I know everybody wants to see my face. All right. I love you all. Be good. Be safe. Now, I'll tell you what, Pam. I've also seen some of those bedtime stories that you were reading <laughs> every night for a while there. I was going to post one of those up, but you were in your PJs, so I didn't want to buy it <laughs> just like that. But, um, you know, Pam, now Lauren is on the cusp of being an adult, but you're technically the only real adult on the panel. I guess I don't count, and whether I'm a real adult or not is debatable. But um, so, so I'm going to ask you probably the toughest questions, Pam, all right? So. Okay. So let's get right at it because there's an organization called healthychildren.org and they are an organization made up of America's pediatricians and they basically are saying that these decisions will need to be taken into account the spread of the disease in the community as well as whether schools are able to make in-person learning safe and this map which was shown in the New York Times on I believe Monday of this week, shows that our area, if you look in the bottom right corner there, you can see our area, we are in fairly good shape compared to some of the other metro areas in the country. You know, Pam, I know you can't, you're not here as a spokesperson for the Pittsburgh Public Schools. You can only speak for yourself. But since you are the only employee on the show from the Pittsburgh Public Schools, can you tell us a little bit about what the Pittsburgh Public School strategy is to start the year? So we are going all online for the first nine weeks. Um, we are handing out devices as we speak every day at different grade levels, able, able to come to a different site to pick up a computer or an iPad for our kindergarten through second grade. They get iPads. Um, then our third, fourth and fifth graders get Chromebooks and then high school will get the um, computer, the Dell computers. But so we are completely online for the first nine weeks. So nine weeks from the things that I've seen, nine weeks seems kind of in line with a lot of the other districts across the country. What were you, are you supportive of this plan? Oh, absolutely. So you, we, and, and you know, people, nobody's going to be happy a hundred percent, whatever decision we make. Um, but we need to make sure that kids are safe. We have a lot of um, kids that go home to grandparents. We want to make sure that the families are safe. The staff is safe. We don't want anybody cross-contaminating. We have teachers who share buildings, so they will go from one building to another building, and we don't want anybody to bring anything into the school and potentially give it to someone else, and then they take it home to their families. You know, people are funny. My wife and I both belong to a Facebook uh, Ohio University Bobcats parents page, and I almost never comment on there, but my God, these parents just – are up and uh, uh, the school can't make a decision to please any of them. They're all <laughs> beside themselves, you know. Why are you doing this to us? And it's like, hey, look, this is new to everybody. Can't we all just get along and try to work together here, right? Exactly, exactly. It's crazy. Exactly. All right, Cash, my next question is for you, buddy. Can you explain a little bit, Cash, how your learning experience differs? Because I know you had this experience in the spring too. How does it differ when you're in class as opposed to when you're online at home? Um, I don't get to raise my hand as much. I don't really get to interact as much. How have you been able to 
stay in touch and still kind of be able to hang out and play with your friends through all this, Cashy? Because there's like this app. It's like Messenger, but it's Messenger Kids. I sometimes play games with my friends and cousins. Lauren, my question to you is, this has to be incredibly hard for you. You know, you're ready to go to school and then all of a sudden, hold up, stop, start. I know that your high school year at the Dice was cut short. You know, all the things that seniors do. The prom, uh, I, your prom got canceled, I imagine. Yeah. Did you have a date? Were you ready to go? I was ready to go. So I went to my boyfriend's prom last year, luckily, so I didn't miss out completely. But no, I luckily, my mom was like, let's not buy a dress yet for some reason. She was like, let's just wait. Like, let's do it in April. And I was like, okay, yeah, like, let's buy a dress in April. And then April showed up and then we didn't need a dress. So like, I guess I'm kind of happy about that. Like, I didn't have to go through the struggle. But at the same time, like, I wish I would have had that last moment with my classmates because obviously going to someone else is like, oh, that's so nice. But your own is a lot more memorable to you. So, I mean, I it was hard. The whole experience was very hard. And it doesn't seem to be getting easier. So I'm kind of like, when are we going to get cut a break? Like, it's enough already. No doubt. But, you know, I was talking to a, to a college kid the other day. And, you know, when you go to college for the first time, even though this is unique, nobody in this country that's alive, unless you're 100 years old and went through the Spanish flu 100 years ago, has been through anything like this. But your experience at college is still going to be unique to you and your friends. So you will still have that experience. It may look a little different than others. But, you know, what? I want to stick up for your generation for a minute, Lauren, because when I flip through the channels, right, I love young people. I really do. And I think I think us old people sometimes sell young people short or we have preconceived notions that just aren't true. So, you know, I'm flipping through. I turn on CNN and, you know, they're constantly showing these college kids and these parties and they're kind of trying to blame these college kids for spreading the disease. Here are all these colleges because they need the money. Now, yes, a lot of them have said stay home, but a lot of them are like, come back, come back. And while they want you to come back, they got a set of rules that's this long that you have to follow. And it's really put a lot of college kids in a really bad spot. Trust me, I was a college kid about four years ago, or maybe five, and I have a son now. I know the, the math doesn't add up, but he's a junior in college now. And I know what college kids do. I want to show a clip that I caught from CNN the other day of this gentleman talking exactly about this. I'm not so sure that blaming the, the kids and putting them in the position where you know they, they're signing these compacts that are incredibly realistic. You will unrealistic. You will stay in your room. You will never go out to eat. You will never see friends. You will never go to class. But we're going to bring you all the way to this place. Uh, I'm not sure that doing that and then putting all the blame on them when it fails. Uh, those are. I think that's adults not doing right by young people. Um, we're putting them in positions where we know they're we're, they're likely to fail. We're setting them up to fail. And then we're going to blame them for being irresponsible. And I think we're the ones by, that are, quite frankly, being irresponsible by allowing that kind of thing to happen. I could not agree more. You bring these kids to campus. They're together for the first time. Their whole life, they can't wait to get to college. They get there, and then you tell them, don't look at another person. Don't breathe near another person. Stay in your room. Stare at the four walls. And, uh, and, and by the way, don't go to the cafeteria either. I mean, it's just... It's ridiculous. Um, Pam, my next question is for you. And I know, I know that what you're going through now has brought on a whole set of challenges that you've never seen before. What are some of the greatest challenges to teach online as opposed to teaching in person? Um, so I would say the first thing is making sure everyone has a device and internet access. Um, so in our district, we have about 24,000 students that we needed to make sure had devices and internet access, um, that, and then keeping the kids engaged. So we have some different techniques going on. So we're not teaching all day long because so, we'll have a regular school day, but it's not going to be online all day long. So we'll have spurts of being online and then we'll do some social emotional things. 
Um, but be, having them engaged and making sure they have a device is the biggest thing and learning all of this stuff. So when you're in brick and mortar, you don't necessarily know all of the techniques that a PA cyber or whatever would know, or you, we can't just send everything home to the kids. So learning all of these new platforms and making sure it's engaging and keeping the kids engaged is the big, bigger challenges. Now has Pittsburgh public schools helped the teachers in any way with tactics and strategies to keep the kids engaged? So today was the teacher's first day back at school. Um, but yes, they will have all kinds of training. A lot of teachers who did um, Summer Dreamers this year got some of that, that training already. Um, and then some teachers actually went and took their summertime and went to some uh, online kind of classes and things. So it's a lot of work to be done for it. But yes, they, they have some strategies for them. No doubt about it. Now, you know, Pam, I I know some teachers. I know a bunch of teachers I'm friends with. You know some of the ones I know. I'm not going to say any names. They're all great people. I've had a couple teachers privately say to me that they actually enjoy teaching online more than in person simply because they feel like there are less behavioral issues to deal with. Have you found that to be true at all? So we haven't had any behavioral issues online. I can't say that nobody has had any, but for my school specifically, we have not had any behavioral issues because you're at home with your parents and who's going to act up in front of their parent, right? Right. Right. So there's, so there's less behavioral issues online than they have in the classroom. Exactly. So that's why there are some teachers that are excited about that. All right. I want to remind everybody to get your questions in, get them in here so we can ask. All right. Um, Cash, now I know that you miss being around with your friends all the time, but kind of the same thing that I just asked Miss Parks. Do you find that it's less of a distraction to be at home than if you're in class with all of these other kids? Um, no. Uh... That's, a, that's a Homer Simpson cartoon I showed, by the way. <laughs> You don't, you don't think it? I think it's harder online. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this, Cash, because I know you hear about it, and it, it, I imagine it's scary. It's scary for all of us. Are you afraid of the coronavirus, Cash? I mean, I just don't know what to expect if I get it. So let me ask you this, Cash. What what questions do you have in your mind that you're not sure about, like about the virus? Like I said, I just don't know what will happen. Like, You know, Cash, I'm not a doctor, and I don't play one on TV, although they do call me Doc from time to time. But from everything that I've heard, kids your age don't really get sick from this. Now, I don't want the Internet people to come screaming at me. Ah, oh, there's a kid in, in New Zealand. Yeah, of course, there's all we can always find one somewhere. Yes. And, but, but it is scary because they, they're not sure that kids can transmit it. And I, I'm not even sure if they know if kids your age are big transmitters of it or not. All right, Lauren, let me ask you this. So you're headed to Maryland soon. Have you had a chance to virtually or, or talk to your, your roommates at all? So funny you should ask. I was supposed to have a roommate. Her name was Allie, and she's actually from Maryland. And we got to talking. We got to meet at the last admitted students day before everything with quarantine happened. And then they literally told us, well, first, President Pines, he's brand new to our school. He went on the radio and said, oh, there's no more roommates anymore. And then everyone was calling residents, like freaking out. And then he was like, oh, you know, I'm not going to tell anyone that I actually did that. And then the next day they were like, oh, sorry, you can't have a roommate. So then everyone's been on Snapchat and Instagram. I mean, you see someone with UMD in their Instagram bio and you literally have to reach out because when we get there, we have to quarantine for 14 days in our dorm. So like I can't visit someone across campus, but we could go outside and have a picnic style lunch together. Like it's so... I don't even have a word for it because it's so bizarre. Is that it, it is really bizarre. Let me ask you this, Lauren. Like all of you guys know, I have a college junior, and um, you know, I know his social life has been affected. 
Lauren, how has your social life even here at home and in Pittsburgh been affected by all this? It's hard because you have to find a balance. Like I want to see my grandparents. I want to see my friends. But if my friends are going to be running around with people, I can't see them because I have Crohn's. So I have a weaker autoimmune, but like obviously not as weak as someone who could potentially have a lung issue and die from the virus. But you have to find that balance. And it's been hard because I'm like, oh, I can see you, but like, let's go outside. So I feel like proper goodbyes before school really aren't non-existent at this point. So, I mean, that aspect of it has been really hard and like not knowing when you're going to see people again. It's more of just heartbreaking than anything else because it's like I'm saying goodbye, but I don't know for how long. Right. Right. It's it, it, it's total bizarreness. And, you know, I know it's hard for kids Cash's age, but I remember being Cash's age. I've been to Cash's house. Cash has a number of activities he can get involved with. I know for kids your age, Lauren, you guys are like pack rats. You need to be together at your age. You're very social creatures. Um, what are you – Brian Bennett has a question for you, Lauren, and Brian wants to know what are you looking forward to the most in the crazy beginning of your freshman year? I think just being a part of something new because I've been stuck in Pittsburgh, not interacting with people my age, no offense to my parents or anything, but like – it's been hard. So I feel like just meeting new people and being in a new place because I'm sick of walking around the same neighborhood, saying hi to the same people. I just think a change of scenery and a new experience sounds so good right now. No question. Cash, Nancy Mowry has a question. I'm just going to paraphrase it. Do you ever feel sad that some of the things that most normal kids have always gotten to do that you can't do right now? I mean... Sometimes I thought I wish I had a sibling. I feel yeah. you, Cash. I know, I know. Our son doesn't, but you know what, Cash? I know you got that cute puppy, Charlie, and I got a chance to meet Charlie. And if anybody ever gets the chance, man, that dog Charlie's got to be one of the cutest dogs I ever saw. I mean, he is hysterical. All right, Miss Parks, we're gonna move on to you now. So. There's an academic aspect of it that kids miss when they're not in school, and there's a social aspect of it. Which are you more concerned about the longer that kids can't be in school? Would you be more concerned that they're not getting the total academic part of this, or are you more concerned that they're suffering uh, less socialization? Um, so I think it weighs kind of equally. Um, because we're going to be synchronous this, this time, um, in the fall where we weren't in the spring, we were asynchronous, but in the fall we'll be synchronous. So they'll see their teachers. They'll be able to learn the same lessons that they would in school, just in a different way. Um, the socialization, I don't know that they're not socializing. Like, so kids today or on Snapchat, Instagram, they're, they're meeting at the park and, you know, doing some of those things. So the, the normal that we used to know is no longer ever going to be again. So I, I think it's just a new way of learning. I don't, I don't know that I weigh one heavier than the other. I think they're kind of both together right now. You know what? It's a great answer, Pam, and it takes me right into my next question. What would you need to see happen in order for you to feel like things are back to normal to make you feel safe? So not only for you to go back to the classroom, but to bring the kids back. So again, I don't think that we're ever going to see the same normal again. Um, I just think if kids are able to come back to school with no masks, that makes it a little more comfortable for everybody. Um, I'm nervous about because I'm in the pre-K to five now. I'm nervous about these babies having to wear a mask all day long. And you know what happens? when they don't or they can't. Um, so I think we are able to come back with no masks. I know we're going to come back when we come back, whenever that is, we're going to come back in a hybrid setting. So it'll be some kids coming back and some kids will choose to stay home. Um, and I think that's going to just be the stair step for us. And once we get that down, then we can get everybody back. So just with no masks, that's the only thing I'm asking, no masks. No mask. All right. Keep your questions coming, guys. We have a question for you, Lauren. Michael Boner wants to know if any of your friends 
are going to take the year off instead of headed back to college or to college for the first time. So a few of my friends have considered and gone through with it. Um, two of them, one is looking into an internship to get like credit courses. So I'm hoping that she follows through with that. I haven't asked her because it was looking a little bit iffy. And then I have another friend who's actually taking a gap year and studying in Israel. I'm not sure if I would do the same because again, like another country during this, I don't know if I could personally do that, but a lot of people have definitely considered, but then I also have friends that just moved into Penn state today. So then it's, you don't really know what the right decision is. I think it's based on the person. I think I personally want to keep continuing with my studies. So then if I stop now, maybe that momentum wouldn't be the same, but there are a handful of people that are taking a gap year. Cash, here's a picture of you and I together last year at a Steeler game. You know, you and I have been to so many sporting events together over the years, Cash, and I can't wait until we can do stuff like that again. What are you most excited to do when this is all over, Cash? Going to another Steeler game with you, hanging out with my friends, going to arcades. What, what's what been the absolute hardest thing for you through all this, Cash? I don't know. <laughs> all right, let, let me ask you this, Cash. You know, a lot of people have said that through this pandemic and this lockdown, in a weird way, it's forced us to spend more time with our families and really, you know, kind of get to know our families a little better and, and do that. Is there anything that you've learned from this, Cash? I mean, I've learned, I mean, before COVID, I didn't appreciate things as much as I do. I would have done now. Like some little things. Yeah. Just hanging out with Charlie, that cute dog of yours, I would imagine. Lauren, you know, you have such a tremendous attitude. I've gotten to know you a little bit, Lauren, and I'm really a big fan of you. You, you Thank just, you. You, know, you, you have such a such a cute, great smile, and you just give off such positive energy. So I'm going to ask you the same question. You know, what what positives can you take away? from what we've all been through over the last four or five months? I definitely think I've learned some skills that I wouldn't have had before going to college. I think being home gives me more time to learn about organization. And with like my studies and everything, you have to get things done. It's sitting in front of you and it's there. So I've been making to-do lists every day. And if I follow through with them, I think that just makes me feel like I'm actually getting things accomplished, even if I'm not leaving my house. Because like Cash said, it's the little things right now. I'm like, oh, I made my bed this morning. Like, I'm so proud of myself. I mean, just like little things like that make it feel a little bit better and you actually are getting things done. Lauren, what would you like the world to know about your generation that the rest of us are getting all wrong? Because like I told you, I'm a big fan of your generation. My son is of your generation. And I kind of feel like older people just – aren't grasping you know things are different my generation was different than my parents generation tell, tell us what we don't know about your generation that we need to know i think that we just want to take it easy sometimes and people don't understand that because i feel like your generation is very go 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 and sometimes we're like i want to stop for a minute i mean we're already losing so much time right now because time's really just a very odd thing for everyone because it's already August and it literally feels like it's still March. So I just feel like living in the moment and enjoying things a little bit more. We still want to have fun, but right now it's very difficult to do. And then getting blamed for being on our phones too much. Like, what do you want me to do right now? I've already been home all day and I've already done what I need to do. You know what I mean? There's just finding that reality check on both ends, I think is super important. I think it's super hard for a kid your age to be forced to stay in the house. I really do. Miss um, Parks, Brian Bennett has a question for you. And Brian wants to know, how is the mindset of your staff through all this? So we just had our very first meeting today and everybody is excited. Um, you know, we, we, we are definitely going to make the best of this and let the kids know that we are still here for them. We're still doing the same things, but they're excited. They're excited about this new this new way. All right. 
Lauren, we have a question for you from Katie. And Katie wants to know, are you nervous that your peers and your new friends aren't going to take COVID seriously when you're at school? I'm really nervous about that. Every night at dinner, the topic of conversation is like, will I be able to stay at school? Because I keep telling my parents, if one person messes up, it ruins it for everyone. And then we're sent home. My The girl I was supposed to room with made a joke. She's like, I feel like I'm packing to be on The Bachelor because I don't know if I'm staying for two days, two weeks, the whole time. Like, you don't know anything. So in my heart, I would love if people would listen. But I know that people aren't really going to do that because people are treating college as like a freedom because we've been home for so long and it's oh new people new place covid like that's not a thing anymore let me just go to a frat party real quick and then you're kind of sitting here and you're saying you need to you need to tune back in like that's not the case people are still experiencing this so i am very nervous and there's an addendum that we had to sign so i'm just wondering how everything's gonna go yeah, it's really crazy. You know, things change so quick, too. I kind of remember when this all first started and the thought process was, and again, I, I'm not a doctor, but if I remember correctly, they talked about testing, 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 and then contact tracing. So if somebody tested positive, the plan was they were going to go to every person they came in contact with over the last 14 days, and all those people would have had a quarantine, and then all the people that they came in contact with, then they scrapped that because you're dealing with hundreds of millions of people in the whole country. I mean, we've all come in contact with somebody who's come in contact with somebody who has this virus. So I don't know how we ever finally, you know, get past that. Um, Jim Bennett has a question for you, Miss Parks. And Jim wants to know, my daughter just started teaching in live classes. What are the new rules that had to be put into effect for live classes? I know you guys are online, but, but you probably, uh, you probably have some, some uh, thought process there, no? Um, so I can't speak for their school but I, because I don't know, but I'm sure they have probably a smaller group of students in each classroom. They have some kind of plexus shield um, dividers for the classes. Um, I know a lot of schools are doing lunch in the classroom as opposed to going to the cafeteria. Um, teachers are going to probably move between classes as opposed to going to the gym or the art room, those teachers will come to you. Still have those masks or face shields on. Uh, I think that, that about, yeah. So definitely the dividers between all of the kids and keeping them six feet. The water fountains probably won't be on with the exception of the, if you get the water from, uh, you know, if it comes down, not if you drink from it. Cash, have they told you when you go back, if you choose to go back, that there's going to be some differences than what you're used to? Um, yes. Like, uh, eat lunch in the classroom. Um, you only get to stay in your classroom for the whole day, except for, like, I think two subjects. So maybe the teachers will move around and the kids will stay put. Do you guys have a regular kind of recess, Cash? Um... We have like a small little pod of 12 kids. So I imagine they probably want to keep all the kids together for a period of time. Is that yeah. kind of the plan? Yeah. All right. So tell me this, Pam. I imagine you, not only I imagine, I know you and your staff are working harder than ever. I saw your Facebook post the other day. I, I may be exaggerating, but let's see. You got to work at 3.30 in the morning, and it was midnight before you got home. Not that you're complaining or anything, but I, I saw that, Pam, and I, I appreciate how hard you work, and I know the kids do, and that's because you care about them so much. Can you give us a sense as to what some of those added responsibilities are that you have? So managing a staff when they're each in their own houses, um, learning all of the, the new um, website or not the websites, the, but the learning platforms. So really trying to figure out how to make them mesh together. Um, still having to do things in the building, making sure that the building is safe, that things are got, done properly inside of the building, making sure that all. So I'm still running a whole building and I'm running a school outside of the school, if that makes sense. It does make sense. As much sense as the rest of this. <laughs> so tell me this, Pam. Do you have a message for all the kids out there that you're not going to be seeing in person for a while? 
You know I do. I miss them so much. I, every day I, I have a few kids that live in, behind me and I have a couple kids that live down the street from me and everybody wants to hug and I'm like, ah, but I, I just want to hug them and, and tell them how much I love them and I miss them. Stay active, keep reading, do some of those math facts. So I know summer was a time to kind of relax and decompress from all of this, but we got to get back, get on a bedtime schedule because school is starting. Do not stay up late at night playing that video game. You hear that, Cash? Your friends. <laughs> so back on to a bedtime and so that we're up and ready in the mornings. Well, as we about to wrap it up here, Pam, I want to let you know that I appreciate you. I know that these kids are lucky to have you. We need more Pam Parkses in the world that care as much as you do. And uh, you're just really good people. And, and I'm glad to know you. Lauren, have an unbelievably great time at Maryland. Mm -hmm. I know it's a little less traditional than uh, probably what the rest of the universe has experienced. But like I said, you will make your own experiences while you're there. And you know, when you get to be my age, you'll look back and it will be an incredibly unique experience. And um, it's really exciting stuff. Really Thank exciting you. stuff. And Cash, man, you always put a smile on my face. Cash money. I know how proud your mom and your dad are of you. You know, you're like you're like the kid everybody wants to be, man. You're athletic, you're good looking, you're musical. You're like the child prodigy cash. And I'm I'm your biggest fan. I always say that if I could buy stock in cash, where do I sign? Where do I send the check? So um just realize, Cash, this too shall pass. And soon enough, you will be back with your boys and girls and you guys will all be hanging out. So hey listen. I'm going to remove you all from the stream, but I don't want you to log off yet because I want to talk to you for a minute when the show's over. But I do want to tell the viewers what we got going on next week, okay? So thank you. I'll talk to you all in a minute. Wave bye to everybody out there. <laughs> bye. All right. What, what an awesome panel. Just great people. And really, for everybody that's headed back gaming is a community of online gaming for Jewish students. was a lost tribe. Andrew and Ethan called the real life game, and we're going to get their take.